Now space. The Earth's newest satellite, Britannia 7, launched accidentally earlier this week, is still in orbit 250 miles up, and all attempts to achieve re-entry have so far failed. Efforts to rescue the trapped occupants have proved unsuccessful also, and the space shuttle rescue vehicle with Garfield Hawk at the controls is now on its way back to Pontefract. Despite these setbacks, however, the morale of Britannia 7's crew is said to be very high. I think we'll have to face the fact, Fanshawe, that the outlook is pretty grim. <laughs> we are doomed to be stuck up here forever, sir. I should like to be given the opportunity to take certain steps. You mean the suicide pill? I should like to ring up the RAC. <laughs> well, they won't come out this far. <laughs> well, I want to cancel my subscription. Oh. <laughs> Things aren't as bad as that, Fanshawe. Any news? Yes, yes. I think I'd better have a word with Mrs. Noah. Where is she? In the galley with Garstang. Mrs. Noah! Ooh, talk about 21st century space <coughs> technology. The sink's bunged up with tea leaves. <laughs> She's made it worse. She's compressed it. All it needed was a little tickle with a white coat hanger. I'm afraid our problem is slightly more serious than a bunged up sink. You won't say that when the sink's so full of dirty crockery you can't fill the kettle. You can, you can use the dishwashing machine. Oh, no, you can't, because that's bunged up with a wire coat hanger. Now, please, <laughs> please listen to me, everyone. I've just had a message from Mission Control. Apparently, we're going to be up here very much longer than we expected. How much longer? Oh, probably quite a few weeks. Or even a few months. A few months? Oh, dear. Yuck. Isn't there anything we can do? Uh, we've tried every manoeuvre in the book. Now they'll have to reassess the whole situation starting from scratch. Still, we are front page news. Yeah, but tomorrow will be page two. After that, the diary and finally the obituary. I can see it now. Today marked the passing of space cook Mrs. Gertrude Noah, the famous sink on Bunga. <laughs> she was laid peacefully to rest in a multi-billion pound mausoleum 250 miles above nowhere in particular, taking with her a secret recipe to a Bakewell tart. <laughs> she passed over on the 25th of October, and she will continue to pass over every 53 minutes of her <laughs> I think that's very funny, Mr. Connolly. We will get down, won't we? Of course we will, Mr. Garstang. After all, what goes up must come down. <sighs> that's not much comfort, Fancho. <laughs> I like England. I want to be buried in, in England. This sceptered isle. This royal throne of kings. This earth of majesty. <laughs> this seat of Mars. <laughs> this other Eden. Demi-paradise. This blessed plot, this earth, this realm, this England. <laughs> that was very nice, Mr. Garstang. <laughs> there were wonderful points, those two, weren't they? What do you mean, those two? It was written by Shakespeare. It said Brian to May on the matchbox. <laughs> Look, it's nothing personal, but I, I cannot face the prospect of spending the rest of my life in this room with you lot. Oh, don't be silly. Things won't be as bad as all that. Look, let's face facts. We are marooned up here in an unfinished rocket. Down there, they've done everything they know to try and get us back, and they've failed. Yes, but they've said they've every hope of getting us down eventually. That's all talk. The fact remains, we are stuck in this room for the foreseeable future. And she's the crumpet. <laughs> a damnable thing to say. I'm leaving. <laughs> oh, yes, where are you going to? You've got lots of choices, haven't you? You can have a happy half hour with your plunger. <laughs> and there's a continental novelty gas tank and you a tickle with his coat hanger. <laughs> oh, if you're feeling really adventurous, why don't you put on your magnetic boots and go jogging up the wall? If I wanted exercise, I'd box your ears, you cheeky monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Cunliffe, if you've gone too far. It was a bit off, referring to her as crumpet. In her case, it was a compliment. <laughs> She's a very attractive lady. And if she wasn't married, I'd set my cap at her. Many men would be proud to have a lady like Mrs. Noah. So after two or three years up here, we might be grateful. <laughs> <laughs> May I stay?
state categorically that however long we're up here, nobody's going to be grateful. <laughs> With the possible exception of Mr. Carstairs. <laughs> Good God! Now look what you've done, Fancho. What are you complaining about? Look, in a couple of years, your wife will divorce you for spatial desertion. <laughs> then, as captain of the ship, you can marry yourself to Mrs. Noah and have a honeymoon in the engine room. <laughs> if she decides on him, you don't give up easily, do you? I've got an advantage. I'm single. Well, may the best man win. Look. I want to state here and now, I am not competing for the hand of Mrs. Gertrude Noor. Why not? It's the best part. It's the part that cooks. <laughs> it's also the part that'll bash your ears if you don't shut up! <laughs> Ooh, you are attractive when you cross. <laughs> no, look what you've done. You set his hormones jangling. Now, look, all this has got to stop. Our nerves are getting frayed. It's quite understandable. But the fact remains, we've got to work out some way of living together for quite some while. Now, the first thing we've got to do is to apologise to Mrs. Noah. Here. <coughs> I apologise, Mrs. Noah. It, it, it's just that I get affected by the full moon. <coughs> and it's not often I'm this close to it. <laughs> I'm sorry, too. It, it was just a moment of madness. I, I didn't mean any harm. Oh, I quite understand it. After all, I never expected to find myself in such an unusual position. <laughs> you wait till you're on your honeymoon in the engine room. <laughs> any news of Commander Hawke on the Space Rescue Shuttle? I'm trying to renew audiovisual contact. They've missed their entry window and they're having trouble with their oxygen supply. That's it. Do you think they're still having trouble with their oxygen supply? Calling rescue shuttle. Meshcon here. Come in, please. Yes. <coughs> what? Oh. <coughs> Hello, Meshcon. Hawk here. Uh, do you have me in visual as well as audio? You have just come up on our screen, sir. Oh, good. This is our position. There's a leak in the fuel tank, oxygen's low, batteries are down, and I'm switching you off to save juice. Do you think they saw us, Commander? What if they did? Here we are, two pawns on the chessboard of fate, riding the heavens together from here to eternity. You really do speak beautifully. Well, at one time I was going to be an actor, you know. Mm. It was either that or space. It's very empty, space. True. And we are over at India. And no one's looking. <laughs> now, here is the control room, and we are standing just about here. Now, I have a technical clearance to move into this accommodation here. What good will that do us? Well, psychologically, we've got to start living as normally as possible. I mean, you can imagine, on a very long journey of 50 or 60 years, well, the crew cannot possibly live in the control room all the time. <laughs> you go absolutely mad staring at all these dials. Precisely, and that is why living units similar to those on Earth have been installed. You mean like little houses? Well, more like flats, actually. Uh, Fanshaw, would you get rid of this uh, thing? And uh, could you bring the brochure for me? Thank you so much. <laughs> well, I must say, that sounds very nice. Yes. Well, these areas are called Normal Earth Life Imitation Environment. Nearly for short. Thank you. <laughs> right, now, here we have a very nice one indeed. This one contains a superior sitting room, gas log fire, cocktail cabinet, Deep pile carpet, Luxiflex upholstery suite, a dinette uh, with serving hatch and kitchenette, luxury twin bedroom en suite with bathroom and sauna, oh, and an added attraction, a large picture window with panoramic view of the earth. Oh, it sounds lovely. Mm. That's ours. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll do my very best to make it comfy for it. No, no, no. Not ours. Ours. <laughs> Why yours? Uh, because I am the captain. Oh. Right now, next door, there is a bijou residence with single semi-luxury bedroom, semi-large sitting room with shallow pile carpets, <laughs> imitation Luxiflex upholstery, <laughs> imitation gas log fire, plus the usual semi-luxury offices. And what's an imitation gas log fire? <laughs> it's a moving picture of a gas log fire projected onto a small screen with a hot air vent behind it. <laughs> Who's living there? Well, we thought if you couldn't find anything better, it would be ideally suited to you and Mr. Cunliffe. 
I'm not sharing with him. There's only one.